Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about questionnaire development. Before going to the questionnaire development, I mentioned this quote that knowledge is having the right answer whereas intelligence is asking the right question. First we will be discussing about various types of questionnaires, then the various type of individual questions, then steps of designing a questionnaire, then do's and don'ts in designing a questionnaire then the differences between validity and reliability, then the differences between error and bias, then what is the importance of ordering of questions in every questionnaire, then what is the purpose and steps of the pilot study. So these are all my contents. So where do we stand in the research process? So this is in a nutshell your uh, research process that we select the topic decide on the objectives, then fix a questionnaire, then that individual questions will become the variables, then we will make the results out of it, then finally we write up whatever your for your publication or for your thesis or dissertation. So he, we stand here in the development of the questionnaire. These are all the individual steps in designing the questionnaire. First of all, we need to determine the survey objectives, resources and time constraints. So based on that, we need to decide on the questionnaire development. Then in the step two, we determine how are we going to administer the question based on the uh, type of uh, administration such as self-administered or the interviewer administered or the online administered or uh, directly collecting the data. So whatever it is, we need to decide how are we going to administer the questionnaire. Then the third step is to determine the question format, clarity and flow of the questions. Then the fourth step is to determine the type of analysis and variables. I repeat, it is determining the type of analysis and the variables used uh, before the development of the questionnaire. So that is very, very important here. Then we do a pilot test and review our study tool. Then finally, we move on to the revision of the questionnaire. Then we end up in the development of the questionnaire. So these are all the uh, steps involved in the development of the questionnaire. What I have mentioned in the beginning is questionnaire development. Actually, it comes under the study tool. It is one of the study tool and questionnaire is one among them. Questionnaire is the commonly used word which means a set of questions. What is the difference between a question and a questionnaire is questionnaire is a set of question assessing a particular characteristics. For example, here it is an Epworth sleepiness scale where it measures the quality of the sleep through this eight questions. So which means the Epworth sleepiness scale is a questionnaire containing eight questions assessing the quality of the sleep. Same way here there is one more this we don't call it as a questionnaire because we have individual data. So the better term to use because all these questions does not identify a single characteristic. So the better term here it is, it is the study pro forma. So what is the better term here which can be used is the study pro forma. Uh, so like how case pro forma we use here for the extraction of the data from the uh, for the for your research we use this study pro forma and uh, we can use an abstract form or your structured observed guide, observation guide. The structured observation guide is for the observing some of the processes which are naturally existing and abstract form is for from the review of the cl uh, clinical data from the clinically uh, data from the records review. If you want to collect the data then you can use this abstract form. <coughs> Here the questionnaires are classified based on the standardization. So we can use a directly uh, standardized tool in our study setting or we can modify it a bit and we can use, we call it as a modified tool or we can design our own tool and we can use it for collection of the uh, data. Now based on the administration of the questionnaire, we can classify it as interviewer administered or self administered. When the respondent directly fills the questionnaire, it's called a self-administered. When the interviewer fills by asking in front of the respondent, then it is called as interviewer administered. Now let me explain about the online questionnaire. 
so after the covid pandemic this online questionnaires are quite commonly used so let me discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of online questionnaires we can rapidly deploy our questionnaire when it is online there is no headache of data entry here we can do the analysis very easily coding issues will be minimal then we can do it with the reduced cost compared to the collection of data with the paper uh, forms then uh, there are some cases where you have the high response rates when we use online questionnaires on the other hand the disadvantages of this online questionnaire is we have a sample bias whoever responds to this question questionnaire will give a different set of uh, response so that is called as sample bias then usually there will be a measurement error uh, because the respondents has to directly respond from uh, their places then we uh, have again a non response bias and the response rates also will be minimal in in some cases the finer is the most common mnemonic used for selection of the study title now i recommend you to use this finer that is feasibility interesting novelty ethical relevant criteria to each and every single question now we see what are all the contents of questionnaire so contents of questionnaire include the attributes usually the attributes of the people will be asked in front so that will be the individual identifiers usually then the biological parameters biochemical parameters environmental parameters which are all the attributes of the individuals then you can ask about the knowledge of the person what the people know then what the people think about something will come under the beliefs then what people usually do is uh, the other thing you have is the clinical parameters so these are all the usual content of a questionnaire from questionnaire we are moving to questions so how questions can be classified is simply based on the uh, choices which we give so when we ask some question and we uh, make an empty space like this then this is called as a open question then this is called as a open ended question when you have uh, an an, uh, an already existing option for it then it is called as a closed uh, question we usually have semi open question also that is you have closed options then you add one column called as others to it uh, then that others will have an empty space for that so usually closed answer choices are easy and quick to answer coding is easy analyzing is easy more reliable but it will over simplify the issues whereas your open ended questions have, don't have any answer choices easy to ask but very difficult to answer and even more difficult to analyze so that is the difference with between the open and closed ended questions so he, here are some of the other uh, type of uh, questions based on the responses so here we we can have the tick box box categories where you can uh, tick in the options given same way this is called as a rating scale where we rate from 1 to 5 and visual analog scales are there usually for pain they use so how they react uh, between uh, a spectrum very worst to very good excellent so the, we will uh, ask the patient to put a mark in a particular place then we have the different symbols of emojis uh, that can be used and open ended items also can be used uh, <coughs> you can freeze this slide and you can look at the uses and advantages if i try to explain these things it will uh, take more time passing on to the next slide now you should understand the fact that each and every question is going to yield a variable out of it you should have a prior idea about it beforehand designing the questionnaire so now we have four types of common types of uh, variables that is nominal ordinal interval and ratio nominal just contains a name ordinal has a rank order in it it has a rank order in its variables so you have a rank order like this interval and ratio are both are numerical variables both are numerical variables and body weight as an example for uh, ratio and interval respectively the difference between the interval and ratio is you should be clear about the errors and the bias error is a simple deviation from the truth bias is a systematic deviation from the truth 
error can be otherwise called as the random error systematic error can be otherwise called as bias error occurs randomly in all direction it is always present in any kind of study it can be minimized by increasing the sample size it can be minimized by increasing the sample size whereas your bias all uh, happen systematically in one particular direction so that it will mislead the study results it will mislead the study results this is actually a methodological flaw which will result in misleading of the study results and it it, uh, it cannot be reduced by or minimized by increasing the sample size so when you increase the sample size you cannot uh, decrease the bias so you cannot decrease the bias so that is the basic funda behind the random error and the bias so you should be very careful while designing that you are not systematically deviated to a particular direction so that your results are not misled so here is one such example where you have a uh, biased uh, results here is the erotic results so we are missing the target in any every direction here we are missing the target in one particular direction so this is called as bias this is called as an error now you should understand the difference between the reliability and validity validity means accuracy it is the extent to which the question is identifying the uh, identifying what is what it is supposed to measure how accurately it measures is called as validity whereas reliability is otherwise called as repeatability it is called as repeatability or reproducibility so how when you do it very often how it will produce the same results as the previous one so that is the reliability so with this test is accurately towards the center at the same time it has given uh, repeatable results so it is a valid and re reliable one this is uh, it is both unreliable but but uh, most of the values are towards the center here it is uh, reliable it is repeatable at one place but it is not valid here it is both unreliable and unreliable now we are going to the section of do's and don'ts in the in preparing a questionnaire first what you uh, so what you are supposed to do in designing a questionnaire is you need to split into sections you need to split into sections so that if you have 40 questions make it as four sections of 10 questions each so that each sections will be uh, answered uh, very proactively then you can have coding uh, unnecessary coding is not uh, necessary but when you code it when you are using it uh, using yes uh, code it as one when you are uh, coding no you code it as zero so that is uh, the commonly used it will be used in future uh, analysis also uh, it will be helpful so then we need to have a good spacing and use of large fonts in uh, designing a questionnaire then we should be clear about the objective the questionnaire should be in line with the objective this is very very important that your questionnaire should be in line with the objective always keep the objective in mind and design the questionnaire then what are all the don'ts in the questionnaire don't make any confusing questions don't make any ambiguous question one such example is do you often suffer from indigestion don't make any double negative questions do you prefer not to use a non perfumed soap is one example of double negatives double barreled questions also don't ask do you take antacids if you get indigestion in the morning or in the evening so don't make meaningless categorization because uh, here look at uh, if you look at this question what is your age if you code like this if you code it as um, less than 30 this is called as meaningless categorization if you make a meaningless categorization then you cannot know the exact age of the patient at the same time if you want to categorize it in a different way you cannot do so that uh, that makes you understand why we should not do meaningless categorization then next you should not uh, be your questionnaire should not be too boring and there should not be uh, too many questions into it and there should not be any leading questions to it there should not be loading of words in a, in a question and there should you should avoid subjectivity as far as possible 
then avoid abbreviations then avoid the common medical terms from the do's and don'ts we are moving to the order of the question so how the order of the question should be framed is by the funnel approach is by the funnel approach which starts with the general to specific and uh, difficult easy to difficult so that uh, that approach is called as funnel approach you should have a simple to complicated way of order of questions casual to intimate questions initially casual questions should be asked then intimate questions later then uh, you should group together questions of same topic at uh, similarly the identifier should be at the beginning or at the end of the questioner then there should be a chronological order followed with the symptoms or other characteristics then there should be some sort of flow maintained in your question so that they sh- they should not f- uh, feel bored while uh, you uh, while they are uh, uh, undergoing the study then here is one checklist for developing a questioner so what what i am mentioning here is for a title you should mention the title of the study clear and a- unambiguous it should be mentioned same way introduction you should mention the purpose uh, time uh, required to participate in the study confidentiality and the contact person in future needs to be mentioned in the introduction overall layout it should be uh, legible with the questioner divided into sections then when we uh, look at the demography you should ask only the necessary questions for developing the profile of the participants the main body of the questioner should be valid that is accurate it is reliable or reproducible or repeatable that is when it, you are doing it again and again it should produce the same results and it should be bias free and it should be relevant to the uh, study and the length of the study should be taken care and it should be ordered properly then you should look at the questions it can be open or closed or semi open and the variable type should be known to you what is the variable which you are uh, going to use and what type of analysis you are going to use that idea should be there while designing the questionnaire itself then the closing comments you should always have a closing note and a thanks to the participants then accompanying material should be there that is instruction to the participants interviewers and any training guide should be there so this is the checklist for developing a questionnaire you can fr- uh, freeze this slide and you can use it now the last step is going to be the pilot study so before the pilot study you should understand that questionnaire is going to bridge your objective and the analysis or the results so that you should take care of the quality of the questions then you should Uh, uh do if you are uh, doing it with a different language then you should do a translation and back translation and you should be, you should be able to get the same question back so that you need to uh, check one, uh, once then you should prepare the tool guide uh, and uh, the training material for application of the questionnaire then you should under you should make your uh, questionnaire undergo for a review by experts your colleagues and friends then you you can ask uh, review from statisticians field workers and data entry operators so this is very important before you are conducting a pilot study then you should understand what is the purpose of the pilot study the purpose of the pilot study is to check the validity or accuracy of the study tool it is to check the validity or accuracy of the study tool and uh, you should be able to check whether the results are bias free or not and you should ha- you should estimate the time uh, for each uh, pa- pa- participant so application of the questionnaire takes how much time can be estimated through the pilot study so that you, uh, your study period can be finalized then sometimes when you ha- don't have a re- proper reference study for sample size calculation you can use this pilot study for sample size calculation so these four are the um, purpose of the real purpose of the pilot study that is to check the validity or accuracy of the study tool whether it is bias free or not and what is on the estimation of the time and calculation of the sample size to sum up these are all the steps in designing a uh, questionnaire so first step is to determine the objectives our resources and the time constraints 
based on that we need to design our questionnaire then we need to decide how our questionnaire is going to get administered then we should determine on the format clarity and flow then we should determine about the type of the analysis required for this questionnaire and the variables which we are using then we should do a pilot study and we should review it then we will revise the questionnaire so these are all the steps individual steps in designing a questionnaire so all the best for your uh, research and questionnaire development if you like this video please share it to your friends if you have any doubts ask in the comment section subscribe to our channel thank you very much for watching this video